Can I ask all those still to leave the chamber to do so quietly, please? The final item of business is members' business debate on motion 10223 in the name of Marie Goujon on the leader programme. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would ask those who wish to speak to press the request to speak buttons. I call on Marie Goujon to open the debate for around seven minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm really glad to be able to host this debate tonight to focus on an issue which affects all our rural communities, and that is the future of the LEADER programme. And I'd really just like to start by providing some of the background as, uh, background as to how this programme evolved. Now, LEADER is a French acronym, um, which I will attempt to pronounce. Hopefully, I won't put my French family to shame. Uh, which stands for Liaison entre Action de Développement de l'Economie Rurale and translate to English as links between the rural economy and development actions. Now, LEADER comes under the common agricultural policy where Pillar 1 deals with the direct support uh, to farmers, LEADER falls under Pillar 2, which relates to wider rural development. Now, the purpose of LEADER is to be a bottom-up, grassroots method of delivering support to our rural communities, encouraging businesses, individuals and community groups to bring forward projects that drive action on climate change, enhance rural services and facilities, including transport initiatives, enhance natural and cultural heritage, tourism and leisure, support food and drink initiatives, and build cooperation with lo other local action groups across Scotland, UK and in Europe. Now, the programme was first launched 25 years ago and initially involved just 217 regions with a focus on disadvantaged rural areas. The results from these regions were positive and encouraging, and so the leader method was mainstreamed as a fundamental part of the EU's rural development policy. By 2013, the programme covered 2,402 rural territories across the member states. So, what is so effective and innovative about the leader method? Prior to the early 1990s, different approaches to supporting vulnerable rural communities were tried out, but these were typically sectoral, aimed at farming and were a top-down approach with schemes and funding decided at the regional or national level. The effectiveness and innovation of LEADER comes from the principle of the bottom-up and area-based approach involving the local community, community-led local development. The decision-making process is driven by local action groups made up of those who represent the social and economic interests of a local area and who represent both public and private bodies. These groups then assess and decide on the projects they feel fit the priorities to be pursued in their local areas. So what has LEADER delivered? In the last programme funding period from 2007 to 2013, LEADER awarded £92 million to over 2,500 projects. This created more than 1,500 jobs in local communities and helped over 60,000 people from rural areas into training. For every £1 awarded, LEADER leveraged in an extra £1.38 through match funding, and this is set to be even higher in the current programme, which runs until 2020. But what's so great about this fund is the sheer breadth and variety of the projects in our rural communities that it's helped to support. In the current programming period, the 21 local action groups across rural Scotland have helped to deliver through LEADER glamping pods, artisan tea, apple orchards, the Fife Pilgrim Way, converting derelict outdoor pools into caving spaces, jazz on the lochs, equestrian tourism, outdoor nurseries for children, cycling hubs, a project which introduces young children to aeroplane design, and this is just to name a few. In my own constituency of Angus North and Mearns, LEADER has been worth £2.7 million to Angus and £2.8 million to South Aberdeenshire. And it's contributed to the Caledonian Railway based in Brechin to help fund a replacement station building at Bridge of Dunn. It's provided funding towards new mobile cinema equipment for Brechin Community Cinema. And it's helped the Merton Trust in Forfar create a centre for developing rural skills. And I hope I'm not stealing Graham Day's thunder here and that he won't mind me mentioning this too much. And that's also a very deliberate ACDC reference there for any budding fans or those of you paying attention. But it helped support DD8, which is a youth music project in Kerry Muir. This was actually in the last funding period. But it helped them find premises to set up their own recording studio. So from that, the group was then able to grow and they now organise one of the biggest festivals in the North East, uh, Bonfest, which this year is happening in the first weekend in May. And I will re-invite the Cabinet Secretary to again this year, as I did the last time that this was raised. 
But in 2016, that event pulled in over 5,000 visitors and it had an estimated economic impact of £403,000. Now that's huge for the local economy. And LEADER continues to evolve and innovate. I've spoken before in this chamber about the Angus Council crowdfunding platform and the funding team behind this, which is dedicated to improving community capacity. Now, Crowdfund Angus now works in synergy with the Angus Leader Programme. 50% of the crowdfunding target can now be provided through the local leader programme for those projects which seek to reduce inequalities, support better connectivity, or create first-class community facilities, all underpinned by the desire for stronger local economies. Leader has de delivered such a hugely diverse and impressive list of projects. That's why it's imperative that we ensure as far as possible that post-Brexit, we develop policies and funding programmes that support the same innovation and creativity that in turn supports our rural communities. And so now to the real crux of the matter. What now? There are no concrete proposals as to what will replace this element of rural development funding. And the only hint we have is from the Conservative Manifesto, where a UK-wide shared prosperity fund was raised, where it's proposed that money spent will help deliver sustainable, inclusive growth based on a modern industrial strategy, which will allegedly involve extensive consultation with devolved administrations, local authorities, businesses and public bodies. However, as far as I'm aware, this process hasn't started. And with just over a year to go until Brexit and two years until the leader programme comes to an end, this is a big concern. I wanted to hold this debate on leader tonight because amongst the myriad of EU funds which have drawn attention and where there are various campaigns, this one needs to get the focus and the attention that it deserves. That's why I really want to thank the East of Scotland European Consortium for taking the lead in looking at this issue alongside the local action groups and for all of the briefing information in this debate that which they help provide. LEADER needs to be recognised for the positive impact it's had on communities across Scotland. As of January this year, 914 projects had applied for funding across the 21 local action groups. The value of leader commitment was £25 million, with a value in match funding of £37.5 million. The sad thing about the Brexit process is that it's only by going through it that we can fully appreciate what we have right now and what we're going to lose. We cannot afford to lose this programme without a rural development strategy which will work for our communities and work on the same bottom-up principle in its place. And that needs to be developed by working with the local action groups, with local authorities and those who work to deliver this funding on the ground and who therefore know it best. I hope we can all unite in that message tonight and each one of us work to ensure as far as we possibly can that in the Brexit process, our rural communities don't get left behind. Can I first of all ask those in the public gallery to refrain from clapping their hands or booing or any such thing? <laughs> and we now move to the open debate. Uh, a lot of speakers uh, wish to speak, so if we can be quite tight on that, please. Four minute speeches, Graham Day, followed by Peter Chapman. Uh, Presiding officer, thank you. It's um, entirely understandable, perhaps, given where the balance lies, that debate around what will replace the cap has focused on farm payments. Indeed, given how much of the money concerned is distributed through Pillar 1 and the fact farming has a powerful lobbying voice, that was perhaps inevitable. But Pillar 2 does so much more than just supporting farming activity. It provides for the environment, rural communities and the wider rural economy. So I very much welcome tonight's debate on the leader programme and I congratulate Mary Guzon on securing it. I've seen close up in my own constituency the good that LEADER does. The Angus LEADER Fund 2014-2020 totals just over £2 million. To date, in the region of £1.25 million, has supported 23 projects across the county, and it's anticipated the remaining £800,000 will have been snapped up by the autumn of this year. We are at the point already where new inquiries are being turned away. That is how popular LEADER is. Let me offer just a few current examples of what the fund has supported in my constituency of Angus South. It's back to Freakham Community Hub project, where the old Eastgate Primary is being developed and a fantastic focal point for the village to the tune of almost £138,000. Ocalusia Equestrian and Kirimuir received £200,000 towards helping tackle an undersupply in the local bunkhouse market. 
Almost £20,000 went to support the development of Scottish artisan tea growers, uh, a collaborative that works across a number of areas. Two glamping projects between them attracted support totalling £40,000. Inca Village Hall received £2,500 to develop a website supporting its role as a resilience centre. Ogilvy Vodka, one of several burgeoning food and drink businesses in Angus South, were awarded £125,000 for a visitor centre and tasting experience. East Haven Alive were awarded £4,000 to hold their Angus Littering Summit, which I was pleased to speak at. And Muirhead and Burkhill Millennium Hall received more than £55,000 to support car parking improvements for the community. Tourism, community activity, food and drink, environmental projects, all things that matter to rural constituencies such as mine, all supported by leader. And as I use Freecom Hub and the Millennium and Inca Halls for surgeries and have worked with Ogilvy Vodka and the tea growers, I know just how important that support has been. But as evidenced by the fact the Angus Leader Fund is now having to turn away applications, a continuing demand for such backing exists. A high take-up of leader funding is not just confined to Angus, however, it's universally popular across Scotland. Through both direct funding and match funding, Leader has injected a total of £223 million into Scotland's rural communities over the past 11 years. The sudden removal of a funding structure of this magnitude would be devastating for communities, impacting on local facilities, infrastructure and, yes, ultimately jobs. Just as farming needs certainty over funding post-Brexit, so do Scotland's rural communities and businesses who are seeking clarity and assurance of what comes next for them. The UK Government have a duty to step up and take serious action on behalf of these groups. While Westminster Conservatives have made passing comment on the construction of a new shared fund, it's unacceptable that Scotland's rural communities could be left with a serious gap in funding as a result of an incompetent negotiating team. The only option to avoid a potentially detrimental impact on communities and businesses is to ensure that a like-for-like -like funding alternative is in place by March 2019. As the Cabinet Secretary has made clear in his letter to the UK Government this week, Scotland must not in any way be worse off in respect to its funding allocations. Presiding Officer. I call Peter Chapman to be followed by John McAlpin. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I remind members of my register of interest in, as regards farming. And I welcome this opportunity to, to debate the leader programme which provides vital support for rural businesses and organisations. This programme is part of the EU CAP scheme delivered under Pillar 2, and I intend to widen this debate out to cover all support for farming and rural businesses in general. Now, I agree with much of what Mary Gujon says in her, in her motion, and I do believe that the LEADER programme has delivered some excellent high-quality projects. It is unique in the way that funding is well targeted because local action groups are at the heart of deciding which projects get funding. Local action groups are made up of individuals, local enterprises and communities who understand their area and its needs and can therefore make wise decisions on which projects deserve support. They then guide the project through the application process and supervise it through to completion. In my region, there has been a positive impact for projects due to leader funding from the North Aberdeenshire Local Action Group. One example meant Aden Caravan Park in Buchan updating their existing facilities to include glamping pods, CCTV and Wi-Fi after receiving a £32,000 grant in leader funding. And this is helping to attract more visitors to this area and to boost the local community. C.C. Powell Limited, an agricultural machinery dealership based in Banff, secured £100,000 of leader funding, completing their project to construct a store and a parts building and a retail outlet to secure their workshop needs. And upon completion in 2017, this has created new jobs in the area. And finally, in my own home village of Strichen, Leader funding of over 15,000 will see the stricken town house open to the public after refurbishment as a library, museum and archive. And in a small village like mine, this will be a fantastic space to bring the community together. I have highlighted that leader funding is important for rural businesses, communities and activity groups. So it is a good scheme. However, the responsibility does not lie with the UK government to put a new scheme in place. 
DEFRA have made it clear, and I quote, we will maintain the same cash total funding for the rural sector until the end of this parliament. This includes all EU and Exchequer funding provided for farm support under both Pillar 1 and Pillar 2 of the current CAP. And this commitment applies to each part of the UK. So the money is there. And Michael Gove has made it abundantly clear that the Scottish rural support system will be designed and put in place by the Scottish Government to best suit Scotland's needs. He has been absolutely clear that he does not wish to become involved in that part, that apart from agreeing high level rules and regulations which we need to protect our internal UK single market. So in closing, presiding officer, if Marie Goujon wants a leader scheme in place post Brexit, she needs to lobby her own government ministers to come up with a plan. It is their responsibility and in their hands. Instead of this SNP government planning for Brexit to fail, to further their own political aims, <laughs> they need to start listening to our rural communities and get on with the job of governing. <laughs> Fergus Ewing, who is sitting here listening to this, must start giving some guidance on the new system of support, which our farmers and rural communities expect and deserve. Right now, he is failing them. <laughs> John McAlpine, followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I too would like to congratulate Mary Goujon for securing tonight's timely debate on the Leader Programme. There has been a lot of attention paid to uh, EU funds uh, in recent uh, years, given the Brexit situation, and a lot of focus has been on the Pillar 1 of CAP and Common Agricultural Payments. Uh, but LEADER, as has already been said, is part of the Pillar 2. Uh, it might be less well known uh, in urban parts of Scotland, but it's equally important. Uh, Mary Goujon and others across the chamber have laid out what LEADER is, so I won't go over the same ground. Um, but in Dumfries and Galloway, where I live, um, I wanted to draw attention to some particular projects. Uh, LEADER has invested uh, in excess of 10 million uh, in communities across the region over the past 20 years. Uh, LEADER funding has been invested in projects such as the Wigton Book Festival in Scotland's Booktown, uh, which uh, gives year-round support to literacy events in the region. Uh, also Spring Fling, which is uh, an open studio event, and it's probably the biggest open studio event in the UK. Uh, the Dumfries and Galloway Arts Festival, which is another year-round festival, which has really put the region uh, on the map as a, as a leader uh, in creativity. Um, these are projects which contribute greatly to the economy of the region and it's the initial investment by LEADER that has allowed these initiatives to grow and leverage in uh, funding from other sources. Uh, Dumfries and Galloway received just short of 5.6 million for the current LEADER programme and half of this funding comes directly from the EU with the Scottish Government match funding uh, the other half. Uh, this was the third largest allocation across Scotland uh, and since its launch in September 2015, it supported 42 projects with grants in excess of 2.6 million. Uh, these include community-led initiatives like the Sperich Hall project near Dunscore, a small village, allowing the local community association to rebuild the village hall, which was destroyed by fire in 2013. And it also supports uh, rural business uh, sectors such as the Ninefold Distillery Project. The micro distillery will be set up in a renovated stone farm steading building on the Dormant Estate, increasing the diversity of income uh, to the business and build, bringing new and skilled employment to rural Dumfries and Galloway. And importantly, in the Year of Young People, a leader funds a number of initiatives uh, which support the youth of the region, including uh, the Bridge to Employment, which helps young people with uh, additional support needs into the world of work. Uh, the project aims to establish an alternative post-school progression route uh, for these young people in the Stewartry area, uh, another very rural area. Uh, and these young people mostly have autism spectrum disorder. Uh, they've already gained national qualifications, but require additional support to take the next step into work. Uh, another project for young people is the Upland Creative Network, which provides a platform on which these people uh, can consider employment opportunities in the creative industries. Uh, 
There are simply too many projects to mention in a four-minute speech, but I hope this gives a flavour of the importance uh, to leaders. Uh, in just one uh, corner of uh, rural Scotland, it has an enormous impact, and the potential loss of this funding has been a recurring issue, uh, and it has arisen uh, on several occasions uh, in the, this Parliament's uh, Europe Committee, which I convene. Um, I spoke in the continuity uh, debate uh, last week when we were discussing the timetable and I quoted from uh, my committee's report on the future uh, of Scotland's relationship uh, with the European Union and the fact that we said that uh, powers which were devolved under uh, the Scotland Act uh, should come straight back to this Parliament. But it's important that that clause in the report also said that um, the, these devolved powers should come back accompanied by a funding mechanism that results in no detriment to Scotland. And that's very, very important because we know that the cap funds, Scotland gets far in excess of its um, population share of the cap funds. So since, uh, despite what Mr Chapman, Chapman says, we have not been given any indication as to how the UK government plans to replace uh, the, the shortfall in these funds. Are we going to go down the route of the Barnett formula? Um, which, Ms uh, McAlpin will have to close. Yeah, I'm afraid I don't have time. Are we going down the route of the Barnett formula? If we were, we would have an enormous shortfall uh, in the amount of uh, money that we receive. The UK government has still given no indication as to the answers to these questions. And I have today written to the Secretary of State, Ms. David McAlpin Mundell, will have to, try to, close. to get clarity on these issues because time is ticking. Thank you. I have Liam MacArthur followed by Tom Arthur. Uh, thank you very much indeed. And can I congratulate uh, Marie Gujo on her impressive uh, strike rate in securing members' debates and following her uh, Hen Harrier debate recently. Thank her for picking another that has a, a real resonance uh, with my Orkney constituency. Can also pay tribute, uh, as uh, Marie Gujo's motion does, to all the leader staff, including Phyllis Harvey, Orkney Islands Council and the local action groups across the country that put in such a colossal uh, amount of work. Looking at the uh, Orkney LAG uh, members, it pays testimony um, to the, uh, the talents of a wide uh, variety of individuals who give up their time uh, to assist in this process, facilitating cooperation, supporting individuals, rural-based enterprises and communities across Scotland, UK and indeed Europe. Deputy President Officer, the tragedies of Brexit are manifold. I still believe it is an act of self-harm on an epic scale. And one area in particular where I think our participation in European integration over the decades has borne quiet but very profound dividends is in relation uh, to rural development and wider structural funding, support for our peripheral uh, areas. This existed, of course, prior to us joining the common market in the mid-70s, but I think it was given impetus uh, and ambition uh, thereafter. With just over 12 months to go before Mrs uh, May uh, decides to uh, pull the ripcord, sadly, what is to follow in terms of rural development, as in so many other areas, is as yet unclear. For those of us representing rural and island communities, that is deeply concerning. Marie Goujon has already spelt out how over the last 25 years, LEADER has had the Heineken effect in terms of community development across uh, Scotland. In Orkney, it includes support for SMEs and social enterprise, as well as farm diversification. Orkney's crucial tourism, cultural heritage, crafts and food and drink sectors, community services and facilities, Orkney's natural environment and sustainable energy, as well as development of our fisheries sectors. In each of these areas, an array of initiatives from innovative fisheries related research to skills training, to improving access to natural uh, heritage and tourism sites uh, has been supported. All have benefited from LEADER and from the collaboration it engenders with other partners, the Council, HIE, Community Councils uh, and others. Um, this is not to say that looking forward uh, that improvements cannot be made and I think there is an opportunity at this point to consider what works well, what needs to be preserved and what is perhaps in need of reform. I know from personal experience of watching my wife wrestling with the requirements of LEADER as part of a thankfully successful application for funding to allow the expansion of the Orkney Fossil and Heritage Centre in Bury, uh, that this can be a bureaucratic nightmare and I seem to recall her using language that was a good deal less parliamentary than that. But it is true that potential applicants can be put off engaging with the programme. We need to make, bear in mind uh, who actually is the target beneficiary. Many community groups are run by volunteers in their spare time. And bear in mind too, uh, what is the desired outcome from the funds, that projects coming to fruition and leaving a lasting legacy within their communities. 
So I think there's scope to simplify the application process and guidance, making them more straightforward and less susceptible to constant change. To ensure also that penalties for errors are proportionate rather than punitive. A more intuitive IT system for applications and, and claims, which doesn't require leader staff to reset passwords, which is not always easy uh, at evenings or over weekends when many applications are being put together but which also allow applicants to print off applications for discussion at committee meetings uh, or retention by treasurers, which again is not currently possible. But we must continue uh, with the grassroots-led approach, locally agreed strategies and decision-making uh, on, on applications. But again, I think there is scope for more local control, uh, both over budgets, but also reallocation uh, in response to changed local circumstances. So I think food for thought about how we improve leader in future but what is not in any doubt whatsoever is that the need for this sort of uh, uh, support will remain whatever emerges uh, from Brexit. So can I thank uh, Marie Goujon again for allowing this debate uh, to take place. And I look forward very much to seeing what Orkney-related topic uh, she goes for next time. Thank you. Tom Arthur, followed by Colin Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to begin by thanking my friend and colleague, Marie Goujon for securing this important debate on liaison entre action de développement économique rural, otherwise known as LEADER. LEADER is, of course, a community development scheme with funding by the European Union that has benefited many communities across Scotland, including in my own constituency of Renfrewshire South. The Greater Renfrewshire and Inverclyde Local Action Group, which is responsible for the delivery of LEADER in my area, takes in Renfrewshire, East Renfrewshire and Inverclyde local authority areas. Of the 17 different settlements covered by the uh, Greater Renfrewshire and Inverclyde lag, seven fall within my Renfrewshire South constituency, namely Loch Winnock, Hobarkin, Howwood, Brookfield, Linwood, Uplandmuir and Newston, with the Craigens area of Houston also included. The social and economic diversity of these areas reflects the wide range of communities that benefit from LEADER. With over £2 million of funding, the Greater Renfrewshire and Inverclyde lag has been supporting jobs and initiatives within Renfrewshire South, such as the Tag and Tack project at Clyde Muir Shield Regional Park near Loch Winnock. Through the use of satellite tags, this project allows children to track the movements of lesser black-backed gulls and barn owls using a geographical information system technology. Previous projects in Renfrewshire have included supporting community groups and the restoration of a historic building. And, anal and analysis of the 2007 to 2013 programme highlights a number of other positive impacts, including the creation of over 150 volunteering opportunities, 130 training places, the safeguarding of 13 jobs, and the creation of an additional three jobs. Presiding officer, just as important as the resources made available is the way in what is also the way in which decisions are taking. The Greater Renfrewshire and Inverclyde Lags Local Development Strategy for 2014 to 2020 was developed following extensive engagement with the local communities. In Linwood, which was um, new to the lag area, a consultation meeting was held with members of the community, representatives of local groups and key agency stakeholders, which generated a range of ideas for projects that would meet the needs of the local community. And it's telling of a range of communities that benefit from LEADER because Linwood is not what one would normally associate as being a rural community. Um, in East Renfrewshire, the council undertook an online survey of interested parties. And such engagement like this means that the programmes of local action groups are effectively co-designed, contributing to our shared ambition to further empower our communities. Presiding officer, it's clear to me that my constituents in the Renfrewshire South have benefited from LEADER, both in resources provided and in the opportunity to play a greater role in shaping their communities. Sadly, all of this is now under threat because of Brexit. Along with the majority of my constituents, in 2016 I voted Remain. Yet now we stand to see communities in Renfrewshire South undermined by the potential loss of programmes like LEADER, just as, we see our heart, just as we see our local and national economies threatened because of fanatical hard-right Brexit ideologues in the UK government, and a few in here too. Presiding officer, if the UK government is going to inflict this Brexit catastrophe upon us, then they have a duty to start setting out how they will compensate my constituents in Renfrewshire South and the many other communities across Scotland who currently benefit from LEADER. 
They have had nearly two years to get their act together on Brexit. The UK government better start coming up with answers and they better start coming up with them fast. Colin Smith, followed by Stuart McMillan. Thank you, President Officer, and thank you to, to Mary Goujon for tabling her motion, uh, and along with Tom Ather for explaining the, the leader acronym, which saves me trying to do it badly. This debate provides a great opportunity not only to, to highlight the excellent community-led work being supported by leader programmes across, across Scotland, but I also hope it begins the discussion on how we ensure this work and the best possible <coughs> rural development support is maintained, whatever the final outcome of Brexit is. As we've already heard, leader funding provides support for a whole host of vital work in all our constituencies and regions. And crucially, it is led at a local level. It means the specific nature of the projects can vary widely, but in doing so, leader provides local solutions to local problems and opportunities. This is the key to su its success, as I've seen in my own South Scotland region. In the current round of funding, almost £23 million has been allocated to local action groups in Ayrshire, Dumfries and Galloway, the Scottish Borders, Tynesk and South Lanarkshire. As a councillor and chair of Dumfries and Galloway Council's Econo Economy Committee, I had the privilege of being a member of the Local Leader Programme Local Action Group, and I saw at first hand the real difference the programme made in my home region. It's a programme that supports a whole host of innovative community projects in Dumfries and Galloway, such as Exercise to Happiness, which is working with local football club Greyston Rovers to create a service for people with mental health problems, and the Care Campus Initiative at the Crichton and Dumfries, where a new model to provide housing, social and community support with access to care for older people will be tested and developed. Rural enterprise projects such as Crafty Galloway are also being supported, which works across the food and tourism sectors to create a Crafty Galloway menu and gin tour and support for the Hold the Front Page initiative created a multimedia community interest company to ensure the Estale and Liddlesdale advertiser continues to deliver news to the local community for many years to come. In the Scottish Borders, projects ranging from youth work to tourism to skills development are funded by the leader project. For example, the Music Shack project, which allowed young people to learn, play and record music together, and the Seven Stains marketing project, which promoted the hugely important mountain biking opportunities for the region. In Ayrshire, leader funding enabled the Ayrshire Rural Transport Network to employ a community transport coordinator to develop transport in Carrick, and the Drunken Challenge Us project, a community and employability initiative targeted at unemployed young people used arts to develop self-esteem and teach transferable employment skills. In South Lanarkshire, support from leader for Castlebank Horticultural and Environmental Training Centre helped the Lanark Community Development Trust convert derelict buildings into community hubs from which training and volunteer opportunities can be delivered. And the leader programme in Tyness includes work to transform Galane Village Hall into a hub for cultural, leisure, sporting and educational activities and a project called Seed to Soup, which allows young people to develop horticultural skills. Presiding officer, I could spend the next hour highlighting the way leader funded projects are working across South Scotland to strengthen rural communities, boost their economies and improve the well-being and opportunities of the people living there. And I would still not scratch the surface. It therefore begs the question, how do we ensure that this invaluable work continues? There's no doubt that Brexit is creating huge uncertainty for many communities across rural Scotland and the need to develop a replacement for the leader programme is vital. It's essential not only that the funding currently provided through the leader programme will be matched, but the character and focus of the programme is largely replicated. Yes, improvements can be made in the processes, but the overall principle must be maintained. As the motion notes, a report by the National Council of Rural Advisors highlighted the effectiveness of how the programme targets and allocates resources. The approach taken by the leader programme is incredibly effective and the emphasis on promoting community-led development and enabling local partnerships must not be lost. President officer, the clock is ticking and so far there has been very limited progress. Rural Scotland isn't interested in the UK and Scottish governments arguing. They want both governments to work together to develop the support so important to Scotland's rural communities. Thank you. Uh, before we move on, Mr McMillan, um, there are a few people who still wish to speak, so I am happy to take a motion without notice under Rule 8.14.3 to extend members' business by up to 30 minutes. And I would ask Marie Gujon to move that motion. Moved. Uh, can I ask members if they agree? The motion is therefore agreed. And we move on to Mr McMillan to be followed by Liam Kerr. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. First of all, I want to congratulate uh, Marie Goujon for securing this uh, member's debate. Now, I'm not going to go over the, the ground that's already been covered 
uh, about the leader uh, programme, suffice to say that it has been hugely beneficial to all of Scotland, but also to my Greenock and Inverclyde constituency. But before I, I go on to uh, talk about my constituency, uh, just at this one point, just to Peter Chapman. Peter Chapman, in his contribution, spoke about the, uh, the programme being guaranteed, and the money being guaranteed until the end of this Parliament. But, but what guarantees has his government, his UK government, actually offered uh, to protect his cherished UK single market post this parliamentary term? And certainly, I think we all know the answer to that, zero. Uh, there are two projects uh, so far uh, from the, the leader uh, programme in my constituency that certainly have been uh, benefited from this. The first one is the, the Argyrian Distillery. That's received £25,000, uh, and that's uh, as part of a package of funding um, that's uh, hopefully going to deliver some 50 new jobs in Inverkip. And the second is the Gurek Golf Club, and that received £80,600. And the, that's, I want to talk about that Gurut Golf Club in a moment, but I just want to talk, touch upon the Argyvin Distillery first of all. The Argyvin Distillery also received just under £1 million uh, from the Scottish Government uh, Food Processing, Marketing and Cooperation Grant Scheme last November, and it was the, the Cabinet Secretary who actually awarded that uh, sum. The this distillery will be Inverclyde's first distillery in decades, and it certainly will be a huge tourist attraction, as well as creating up to the 50 jobs locally. The Argyvin Distillery will be situated in the village of Inverkip uh, on the historical Argyvin Estate, which has historical links to both King Robert the Bruce and also to Pocahontas. Now, my colleague has a wee chuckle, and I'll explain <laughs> why. Uh, Sir, Michael, Sir Michael Shaw Stewart, who was the fifth baronet, married Eliza Farquhar, who was a direct descendant of the Native American princess Pocahontas, who was one of the most significant figures in the early colonial history of America. Now, this project will certainly help many... <laughs> this, this project will certainly help many uh, of the cruise ship tourists who actually uh, who disembark uh, in Greenock. Now, certainly last year, it was just over 106,000 people disembarked in Greenock. And over the course of the next uh, up to 10 years, uh, that figure is going to increase to up to 200,000 people. At the moment, many of them actually leave Inverclyde and go to or go on distillery tours elsewhere. But when we actually have our own distillery, which is due to open in 2020, that means many of these people will actually stay. That money will then be regenerated within the Inverclyde economy. And that can only be a good thing. The second example is the is Gurut Golf Club. I recently visited the Gurut Golf Club uh, to see their new state-of-the-art uh, development studio. Its uh, total cost was £184,000. And as you can see, the leader funding has paid for half of that facility. Now, the Gurut Golf Club is performing well, but this new facility will actually bring in uh, more people and also bring in many, many people actually from outside of Inverclyde who will then be spending some money within the local community. Now, also the project, now this is where the pro this project is really important. Now, this investment uh, will certainly provide this all year round facility uh, for the local community. Children under 18 will be able to use it for free. Community groups such as the Scouts, Girls Brigade, Boys Brigade, etc., will be using it for free. There's partnership <laughs> with local Inverclyde Active Schools programme, uh, and obviously that's free as well. Uh, and recently, there have been partnerships with local groups working with adults with learning disabilities. Uh, and that has just begun, and that's something that's going to benefit many people within the community too. So, presiding officer, the EU Leader Programme is beneficial to many communities, uh, and certainly two that I've just highlighted prove this for my constituency. Now, I hope that when Brexit does happen, this fund or a similar fund will actually exist. And that's where, I, once again, I echo Marie Goujon's comments from earlier on. Thank you very much. Uh, the two final open debate contributions will be from Liam Kerr, followed by David Torrance. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I congratulate Marie Goujon on securing this debate, not least because she has achieved her endgame. During a conversation last week, she made clear to me when I said that I wish to speak how important it is to highlight this funding stream, acknowledge the good work and the types of work going on, and ensure all who need it can access it. And I'm very pleased to try and help in that regard. The motion calls at the outset for Parliament to acknowledge the excellent high quality projects currently being delivered by the leader programme. Many speakers today have done just that for their own area, noting just how vital this funding is to their constituencies. Some supplied us with concrete evidence like the very useful 
infographic supplied by the Cairngorms leader to highlight the value of this funding to community-led local development in the Cairngorms. In my own region of the North East, I should specifically like to highlight the funds for the Strathorne Riding School to develop and build an indoor horse riding and driving arena to provide facilities for a disabled group and an area for people in the community who share an interest in horses. Then there's the funds for Aberdeenshire Highland Beef, an already successful local business, to expand by setting up an on-farm butchery and an e-based shop to produce and market local beef. That's jobs. That's money into the local economy. And the motion moves on to ask Parliament to note the solid and unique framework provided by Leader, which creates local partnerships between individuals, rural-based enterprises and communities, enabling them to innovate, diversify and become more sustainable. This is true, and it's demonstrated by the refurbishment of Drumoak Church project. Using Leader funds, the community are going to provide basic utilities such as drainage, kitchen facilities, toilets and broadband to the building. This will create a multi-purpose open plan area for the community groups that currently use it, which includes the beavers, the cubs, mother and toddlers, music group, a youth cafe, an over 60s club and yoga classes. That is what community is all about. That's what partnership is all about. That's what leaders are all about. Now at the conclusion, the motion calls for urgent clarity on what will replace this funding once we are no longer members of the EU and how money will be allocated. I think this is a fair point. These are vital funds and achieve a very specific and important purpose. But I'm genuinely confused by the motion's call for clarity from the UK government. These funds are distributed by the EU under Pillar 2 of the Common Agricultural Policy. Under Pillar 2, it is the Scottish government which decides what projects it is spent on. Now, the UK government has made absolutely clear that the same level of funding will be provided by the UK as we have received from the EU under the Common Agricultural Policy until at least 2022. Michael Gove has been clear that how that money is spent is the responsibility of the SNP government. So surely it is for the Cabinet Secretary to, in Tom Arthur's rather overblown rhetoric, to get his act together to provide the clarity sought by the motion as to whether the SNP wants to carry on with a leader scheme or not. This is people's livelihoods, ventures, projects, and indeed many aspects of the rural economy are at stake. Not in that time, thank you. Our rural communities and enterprises need assurances on what comes next for them. The motion is therefore correct to demand clarity, but I can't help but conclude that that clarity should be demanded from the Scottish Government, where apparently the onus, in fact, lies. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from David Tons. <laughs> thank you, President Officer. I would also like to thank Mary Gujon for bringing this motion to Parliament today to recognise the success of the Leader Programme. This debate is an important debate to have in this chamber as it relates to the welfare of our rural communities in the wake of Brexit. Community-led local development in rural areas is an important factor to continue well-being and development of Scotland as a whole. That is why today we recognise the Leader Programme for its great success in facilitating community-led development via partnerships between individuals, businesses and communities to produce projects that contribute to local prosperity. Our communities across Scotland have benefited as a result of this programme. According to SPICE, the leader programme is worth roughly £86 million over the current 2014-2020 period. Half this funding is from the CAP Pillar 2 and the other half is Scottish Government co-financing. Millions of pounds have been provided to each of our 21 local action groups finding that as a fuel of the projects that benefit our communities. In Fife, the Leader Programme has funded, has funded over 14 projects since 2014. These projects include the restoration of three ecological and economically important estuaries, a programme that aims to equip young people with the knowledge, skills and support in the creation of a micro-businesses and employment, a park with a campsite along the Fife Coastal Path creating new green space and also new jobs, expanding and renovating a busy working harbour, and the creation of a new long-distance road connecting small hamlets and enhancing existing paths. These are only a few of the projects that have been funded in Fife, out of many that have seen success or are currently in the pipeline. And there are 20 other local, lo local action groups across Scotland that are experiencing the same success in local, bottom-up improvements to rural communities 
enhancing their lives of everyone involved. The LEADER programme has provided extensive accomplishments in increasing support to local rural communities and business networks, building knowledge and skills and encouraging innovation and cooperation in order to tackle local development objectives. The projects produced the programme's funding also attract people into the area as well as visitors who utilise the developments. Thus, the grassroots approach empowers the people to improve upon their own lives and the lives of others. Yet this unique prog programme soon faces challenges as the United Kingdom succeeds from the European Union. The substantive funding that the programme receives through the Rural Development Policy of CAP will disappear. As Brexit looms even closer, we must look into the future in order to gain a sense of and act upon the implications of leaving the EU as for the LEADER programme. Over the current 2014 to 2020 period, LEADER is expected to create over 550 jobs in rural areas and has already resulted in over 400 projects benefiting rural communities across Scotland. When the CAP two, Pillar 2 funding disappears, the LEADER programme loses 50% of its funding. Looking into the future, we see a potential for additional complements through the LEADER programme projects that manifest jobs and improve the quality of our life in our local communities. We can see Scotland continue to prosper by empowering local communities and giving them opportunity to enrich their lives and those of anyone who visit. But this is only an option if we maintain the leader programme with the same level of funding and support as we do presently. The UK government must continue to support the leader programme and provide clarity as to how funding will be replaced after the United Kingdom leaves the EU. The social, economic and cultural benefits of this programme cannot be understated. Rural communities have been empowered to enrich local well-being, develop and innovate project projects and benefit the lives of community, while also building knowledge and skills and relationships between local businesses and individuals. We must sustain the programme for further success in our rural communities. In conclusion, presiding officer, I'd like to once again thank Mary Gujan for securing this debate in chamber today and the volunteers and the participants in the LEADER programme for making the well-being of our rural, rural communities a priority. We need to continue to support the LEADER programme. Building up rural communities via grassroots approach is beneficial to these communities and Scotland as a whole. I now call Fergus Ewing to wind up in this debate. Uh, around seven minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I, I uh, warmly congratulate Mary Gouchon on uh, initiating this debate and for, for the lively and informative way that she uh, introduced it in her speech uh, this evening. And uh, I've, I've always believed that the French and France, the country of France, uh, can lay claim to be the architects of much of the world civilization that we all enjoy. I had not known that they also were responsible for the LEADER program. I'm indebted to Marie Goujon, who, of course, has forged her own old alliance, as it were. Uh, and uh, it's very interesting that, that uh, this is a French concept, and it's an excellent one. And this debate has had uh, very interesting contributions from across the chamber, with many examples of how LEADER has helped communities across Scotland and it has been a sort of uh, extended version of tales of the unexpected, uh, of the unlikely, of the vibrant, the diverse in communities. I mean, who would have thought, at least of my generation, sadly just on the wrong side of 60, that um, Scotland would be famous now for tea or vodka, as we heard from Mr. Day, I, I think, not what one immediately associates with the county of Angus, but, uh, uh, or indeed that the Inverclyde would be famous for its distilleries. Uh, or uh, that uh, I was very surprised that Pocahontas made an, an appearance in this debate, but I suspect I'm not alone in that. But I guess the point is that all around Scotland, people are doing different things. And the beauty about LEADER, and I think Mr. Chapman referred to this, is that it's a bottom-up uh, uh, bottom program. That's the whole point. It's not for me, and it's not uh, my duty to say what communities do. It's for them to decide. And of course... Were I to try to do that, of course, well, communities wouldn't be interested, would they? I mean, it's the whole point is to empower communities and to have a fund which enables that to happen. And I think the leader programs, and this is a point I don't think has been made, they occur over a long period. The leader program from 2007 to 2013, uh, and then the leader program from 2014 to 2020, presenting off to the first 
one encapsulated seven years, the next one again, seven years program. And uh, I don't want to be political, members' debates aren't really supposed to be political, at least that, that's what I, what I understood from the ancient days when I was uh, uh, making my first remarks in this place. Uh, but what I would say is that, you know, we have to think long term. What I think people in communities want is not a political arky barky, but the knowledge that when this program ends in 2020, there will be a subsequent program from 2020 to 2027. And it needs to be long term because it takes a long time to build up these projects. I'm acutely aware of this having recently visited one of the local teams <coughs> in um, Murrayshire and meeting many of the, of the people who are either employed or volunteering, and my goodness me, are there a lot, we, do we have a lot to thank volunteers, 200 local volunteers across Scotland, many of whom here tonight, who you admonished earlier on, uh, <laughs> presenting officers, no doubt you have to do in your role. Um, but we really owe a great thanks to the volunteers across Scotland for the enormous work they've done, and they do it because they want to do it as part of their communities. And the local action groups, as has been said by Marie Goujon and others, uh, perform a terrific amount of work on behalf of their communities. So um, I don't want to really get involved in the political arguments. All I would say is we must find a way to see that the current leader program, when it comes to an end, is replaced by another one. And so far as I know, there has no, been no funding clarity on that from the UK government, which is why I've written to Mr Gove uh, to seek that clarity. It's indeed actually why, presiding officer, last Monday when I was in Cardiff meeting with Mr. Gove along with the other devolved administrations, uh, I did seek further funding clarity. And I hope uh, that once the UK government's travails over their Brexit negotiations are eventually over, that we will have that clarity. Now, leader is a fundamental part of the local delivery and empowerment, empowerment of communities. And as we've heard, it forms part of the SRDP, which helps our rural communities. And uh, I, I became aware of this yesterday morning at seven o'clock at the Fraserburgh Fish Market uh, in Waruri later that day in providing um, a food and marketing grant. And I think Mr. McMillan made reference to that program of four million pounds to help Scott Beef set up a new abattoir in Inveruri. And this afternoon I was hosting a venison, venison summit in Perth where it is clear that uh, venison should and will play an increasingly important part in the diet of the nation as the most nutritious meat available, as I'm sure members will know. And the pillar two is designed in part to encourage all these other things. Mr. Chapman is right, the pillar one is for farmers and I'm a great supporter of continuance of support for our hill farmers and others who require it. Uh, but pillar two is designed to look at the wider community so plainly there is a need, a continuing need to do that. In LEADER we have introduced targets for farm diversification for rural enterprise uh, alongside the cooperation target and Mr Smith and Mr Chapman both gave good examples of diversification projects and worthy projects. Uh, the aim is to, to encourage more diversified support to our, our rural uh, communities. Um, there are many examples from around the country of the types of programs that uh, there are um, I don't want to, I mean I could, but I don't think in the time I have I'll run through them. What I would say is it's absolutely vital that we direct attention to supporting young people. And personally I think young people with additional needs should I, and I hope will receive uh, uh, whatever additional support they can in leader projects schemes. The statistics over leader are, are pretty impressive. Uh, and they do uh, result in an enormous amount of uh, funding being invested in Scottish rural, rural communities, and that's a good thing. And as, uh, as uh, I think several members have pointed out, the funding has received additional funding brought in, being matched. So for every uh, pound, there's been an additional £1.43 of match funding. Uh, so in that sense, it's been a highly successful um, project. Uh, Presiding officer, I see my time is coming. Well, I... I, I would love to, I don't know, maybe, can I? I think I could, if oh, you're willing, Cabinet <laughs> Secretary. Liam MacArthur. 
Uh, thank you very much. Um, I know the Cabinet Secretary is drawing to a close. He started off by telling us um, it was a debate littered with tales of the unexpected, and he's absolutely right. Uh, one of those tales, uh, I think, was, um, was about to emerge through the invitation that Marie Goujon offered him to attend an ACDC-inspired music festival. And I hope before concluding, uh, he will put the Chamber out of uh, our collective misery by uh, informing us that he will indeed be taking up that kind offer. He has a wicked look in his eye, Cabinet Secretary. Um, well, I must admit, ACDC wasn't my particular uh, cup of tea, but uh, perhaps you and I could enjoy some Leonard Cohen uh, uh, listening together, signing <laughs> off, sir. I think that might be, uh, uh, that might be better for the, for the soul. But in, con in the conclusion, uh, I think we, we do need to see a leader or something like it continue. I think we're all committed to that. And therefore, in Scotland, uh, I hope if we all work together, that is what we can and what we will do in years to come to build on the success that LIDA has delivered for communities all over the land. That concludes the debate and the meeting is closed.